Welcome to the Chemistry, Biology, and Math Revision Hub. Today, we are doing the Pearson at Excel International AS Biology Unit 3 Potential Questions for any Unit 3 Biology paper. Beginning with the general information, all you need to know, the independent variable is the factor that changes during an experiment, and the dependent variable is the factor that changes due to the change in the independent variable. You need to know that control variables are factors that must be kept constant in an experiment, and you need to know that a control experiment is the one that is done without the independent variable. This allows the measured change to be attributed solely to the independent variable. You need to learn to identify biotic and abiotic variables or factors. For any experiment to be valid, the sample size must be great or the experiments must be repeated at similar conditions and a mean should be calculated. Presence of error bars could be helpful because it shows that the deviation from the mean can be calculated or worse calculated. Remember the quantitative and the semi-quantitative methodologies of experimentation. Semi-quantitative methods like color change are based on observation and these can be subjective. Quantitative methods like using a colorimeter are based on actual experimentations and these are objective. So please revisit the details of how a colorimeter works. This is a common question. If the experiment was repeated and the mean was calculated, then validity can be established. Like I said already, presence of error bars, you should be able to know whether they overlap or not in order to know if the observed change is significant or not. When we get to describing an experiment, like I already said, remember, the independent variable is what you vary and the dependent variable is the effect of the result. You need to write your methodology as detailed as you can not as listed points. You need to clearly state the dependent and the independent variables. And in this case, you will set up at least five different experiments in which the independent variable changes. Sometimes you have to find a way of maybe if it's concentration of something that is changing, you have to find a way of diluting. So you have to write that in your methodology. So write the method you would use to measure the dependent variable. An example, if you're measuring temperature change, you need to say using a thermometer, and within a specific period of time. So in your description, you need to say how long the experiment will be carried out before the change can be measured. And you need to state the variables that should be controlled, like temperature, pH, light intensity, and so on, and how you are going to control these methods. For example, I could control change in temperature by using a water bath, or prevent pH from changing by using a buffer, or light intensity from changing by ensuring that the experiment is carried out in a dark room. You need to repeat the experiment or write that the experiment was repeated at the same conditions and the mean was calculated in order to establish validity. When we go to drawing tables and graphs, after any experimental results are obtained or given, questions may ask you or may require you to draw tables. So you need to fully understand the context so that you can position the dependent and the independent variable appropriately. You need to use a ruler to draw the table and include the correct number of rows and columns. You need to include the correct heading and labels and also include units if you want to get full marks. You need to use the given space appropriately. I prefer you use at least three quarters of the space that is provided. For graphs, it is important to know that independent variable is plotted on the x-axis and the dependent variable is plotted on the y-axis. It is also important to draw the correct form of the graphs. Sometimes they want you to draw line graphs, and sometimes they're going to be bar charts. So you need to know which is required, even if the question has not stated which. Based on the data, you can know which graph to draw. Some questions can ask you to comment on experimental results. So if the experiment was repeated and the mean was calculated, of course, validity could be established and presence of error bars. And whether these error bars overlap or not could be important in showing the significance of the results or the data that is obtained. When we go to questions that require you to describe and explain, some of these questions could be linked to graphs or to tables. They want to know the trend in the results. Remember that explain means give a detailed scientific account of causes and the reasons why the data is the way it is. And if they ask you to describe, the examiner requires a detailed account of what is going on in the data or the results you're observing. If they ask you to evaluate, they want you to give the implications and limitations if they ask you to suggest, they want you to propose a possible answer or a specific hypothesis. If they ask you to compare and contrast, they want you to give advantages and disadvantages. 
And if they ask you to justify, they want you to give a valid reason or evidence to support a proposed answer. When we go to drawing, a picture may be provided and they could ask you to draw and label specific components. Please ensure the diagram you draw is about two times as large as the provided picture and the drawn diagram should be clearly and accurately drawn and not shaded. And please use a ruler if you need to label. To make those connecting lines, you have to use a ruler. A common question is labeling plant stem tissues or animal cells or plant cells. So please ensure you can clearly draw and label components within a plant cell and animal cell as well as plant stem tissues. When we go to the potential questions that could be asked, number one, they could ask you to describe an experiment to investigate the vitamin C content in a food sample or a drink using DCPIP. They could ask you to describe an experiment to test for presence of reducing sugars in a food sample using Benedict solution. Here, you need to remember the color changes that are observed within the solution. Question three, they could ask you to describe an experiment to test for presence of starch in a food sample using iodine. Question four, they could ask you to describe an experiment to investigate the effect of temperature, pH, alcohol concentration on the permeability of a membrane to a substance. Question five, they could ask you to describe an experiment to investigate the effect of temperature, pH, the enzyme concentration on the rate of an enzyme controlled reaction. Question six, they could ask you to describe an experiment to investigate the effect of changing growth conditions like temperature and pH on the mitotic index. If you are asked to explain why these growth changes occurred, please attribute the changes to enzymes being denatured. You remember growth is enzyme controlled and changing temperature or pH can affect the shape of the enzymes, making it hard for them to form an enzyme substrate complex and therefore it could affect the growth. Question seven, they could ask you to describe an experiment to study mitosis. This could involve methods of preparation of the sample like squashing, staining, and observation under a microscope. This is usually connected to plant root tips. Question eight, they could ask you to describe an experiment to show the effect of changing concentration of a plant extract on mitosis. Here they could ask you to calculate the mitotic index, so please revisit the experiments on determining the mitotic index. Question 9. They could ask you to describe an experiment to investigate the antimicrobial properties of plant extracts. They could include methods of extraction, aseptic culture techniques, also include the methods of application of the antimicrobial and the method to measure the result. It also include safety precautions that you have to take, like put on gloves, and so on. Question 10. Describe an experiment to determine the tensile strength of plant fibers. Question 11. Describe an experiment to determine the effect of caffeine containing substances or plant extracts on heart rate. Then question 12. Describe an experiment to investigate mineral deficiency on growth. This could mainly be on plant growth. Question 13. Describe an experiment to show the effect of changing the concentration of sucrose or glucose on the germination of the pollen grains. Question 14. Describing how seeds are treated before being stored in a seed bank. Question 15. Describing an experiment to study the effect of period of storage of seeds on their ability to germinate. Question 16. Describing an experiment to show the effect of vitamin C or foods containing vitamin C on heart disease. Question 17, they could ask you to draw and label animal and plant cells, plant stem tissues like xylem, cholenchyma, and so on. Question 18, experiments on transport across membranes. So it could be an experiment on diffusion, osmosis, or even active transport in correlation with hypertonic as well as hypotonic solutions. They could connect this to changing temperature as well as pH as the diffusion osmosis occurs, so consider that as well. And for question 19, they could ask you about methods for preparing cells, tissues, or fibers, plants or animals, for observing using a microscope. I've already talked about this previously. And 20, using a microscope and magnification, you need to learn to read the eyepiece graticule. Questions connecting to this could be asked. So on this note, I put in some experiments from the lab book. I'm going to go through them slowly. The first one is using the semi-quantitative method with Benedict solution, and the second one with iodine. Please, you need to make sure you know that you prepare at least five different concentrations. They could ask you about questions on how you are going to dilute the stock solution. Please ensure you dilute the stock solution to create the different five concentrations that you have to use in the experiment. 
and then follow the same path where we followed with a general description of an experiment. State the independent variable, that how you're going to measure the dependent variable, in what amount of time, which concentrations are you going to use for the independent variable, and how you're going to measure the results. And then finally, you have to talk about which variables are going to be kept constant in estimating the concentration of starch. Please make sure you revisit this. This experiment is very common about investigating the vitamin C content in a food sample, so please make sure you go through it. I try to write here how you'll calculate the concentration. This is an explanation of what we have done here. Please go through my explanation as well to make sure you fully understand this before any exam. Practical 3, investigating membrane properties, including the effect of alcohol and temperature on membrane permeability. This is a common one, so fully understand if temperature is changed, if there is a presence of an alcohol, how is permeability of the membrane going to be affected. Here they could ask you about how you're going to prepare the sample. Ensure you use like a coke borer here to create samples of the same size in order to study transport across membranes with less variation. This is a continuation of the whole experiment. Please read through this to make sure you understand the quantitative and semi-quantitative methods. If you want to observe your results accurately, you can use a colorimeter. Experiment 5, investigating the effect of temperature, pH, enzyme concentration, and substrate concentration on the initial rate of enzyme catalyzed reactions. Here we could use a colorimeter to help us position samples in order to see any deviation or any changes, however minor they could be. So please read through these to fully make sure you understand. It's the same experiment. One is for temperature. We go to the one which is pH then enzyme concentration. And of course, you know, in any biology experiment, we vary one variable at a time. So if you're varying enzyme concentration, make sure you describe to the examiner how you're going to create those different concentrations of the enzymes and how you're going to make sure every other variable is maintained constant. Like if you're changing concentration, temperature has to be constant, pH has to be constant, and so on. So you have to fully understand how you can write that down. When we go to substrate concentration, of course, if this is changing, everything else has to be kept constant, so you have to explain how those will be kept constant. The next part is using a light microscope to make observations and label diagrams of suitable animal cells. Remember to use a graticule with a microscope to make measurements and understand the concept of scale. Please understand about the stage micrometer scale as well as the eyepiece graticule scale. These will be very important in helping you to measure the length and therefore calculate the magnification. Continuing here, Use a light microscope to make observations and label drawings of suitable animal cells. Use a graticule with a microscope to make measurements and understand the concept of scale. And again here, they could give you a structure and they ask you to redraw and label. It is very important you fully understand that. And maybe they could ask you to describe how you can observe something under a microscope and then be able to draw it down. Please remember the details of this procedure because they are very important. This experiment about studying mitosis is very, very common. I recommend that you fully understand the whole concept of how you get the cells or the tissues, how you get the tissues and how you prepare them for observation under a microscope, connecting that to how to calculate mitotic index. Core practical seven, here they can ask you to use a light microscope to make observations of transverse sections of roots, stems, and leaves, plant tissues, identify the sclerenchyma fibers, phloem, the sieve tubes, xylem vessels, and their location. This is very common as well, so please ensure you fully understand and learn how to label figure A if you see it. So here they can ask you how you are going to prepare the sample. However, if they also ask you to draw and label, you have to make sure you fully understand how to draw and label. The key thing is preparation of the sample, observation of the sample, drawing the sample to scale, and labeling the specific components in the right way. This is a very common experiment as well, determining the tensile strength of plant fibers. It has come previously more than twice, so you have to make sure you fully understand. Finger retort stand and clamps to position the fiber and then put weights until the fiber breaks. You have to know how to fully describe this process. You can go through all the Uni3 biology papers I've answered on YouTube. They have most of these experiments. In past paper questions, you can go there and observe how I answered them and refer to that to guide you further. Lastly, investigating antimicrobial properties of plants, including aseptic techniques for safety and handling of bacteria. This is also very common, more so when they're using plant extracts to see 
their antimicrobial properties. Make sure you understand this. This question has come before and I have answered and described how it was carried out. Please revisit my other videos on Unit 3 Biology on YouTube. So this brings us to the end of this video, as well as the end to the potential questions that could be asked in Unit 3 Biology. Thank you for being with us. Do not forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.